Hi, it's Veronica from Baby Love, and I have been trying to figure out lately how to um, put together the pieces for people who don't quite understand what tongue tie has to do with other health issues. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, a, I, I have never taken anatomy and physiology, um, but I did sit down with Dr. Laura at Acu Chiropractic. She is next door to me um, at Baby Love, and we we've been we've been collaborating for a little while now about tongue ties and lip ties and trying to put the pieces together. So I um, went out and I got a, a coloring book, an anatomy coloring book, and my dog is going to run through the kitchen. Sorry. Um, and did some coloring. We talked a little bit about it and kind of wanted to show you some things, how everything's all connected. So hopefully it helps. Um, yes, Molly. Go lay down. Okay. So first of all, I hope you can see this. Okay. I'm going to try to do this. Okay. So here are the muscles of the tongue. All right. You see that? Oh, it's like reflection of the reflection. Um, so I want you to first of all notice that if there's a tongue tie, this is where it would be, right there. So that restriction right there, um, if there is a tongue tie, that will help tighten the different muscles that are on the tongue. Ooh, this is tricky. Um, so if you can see that, and I don't know if the names are very important, but you can see how everything connects to the tongue muscle because it's a big muscle, right? And then, oh, as I'm moving it on my iPad. And then it all connects up here. And what I will do is I, this is a, um, a chapter in an online book. So I will link to this below in the, in the comment section and on the blog so that you can look at this too. So if there's a tongue tie and if there are restrictions that keep the jaw, the tongue from being able to move freely, that's also going to put tension on these muscles here, which connect to the jawbone. Okay. You see that? All right, so I know that part. Okay, so we start there. Then, in addition to the jawbone, um, the hyoids also connect. Um, and they do two things. They can help with swallowing. You see? Do, do, do. Um, but they also open and close the jaw. So babies who are having issues opening and closing their jaw, you know, we sometimes we notice that they just don't open very much. Um, if they are having problems opening and closing their jaws, a lot of times that's muscular. So from my understanding from Dr. Laura, so not a chiropractor, not intended to diagnose anything, just trying to put the pieces together for you. So you will see that it, opens the jaw, um, and then the, uh, the mylohyoid can be felt under the tongue when swallowing. Do, do, do. You see that? So those connect down here, but they're also connected to the jaw. Um, and so tension can create jaw issues. So that's that set of muscles. Um, now there's the pterygoids, which I've known about for a while. Uh, Dr. Laura talks, talked about them um, when we had the tongue tie forum back in May, I think. Um, so these are muscles of mastication, lip and jaw closure. And these are the pterygoids. So there are the medial pterygoids that go up and down. And then there's the lateral pterygoids that go across like this. And you can imagine, again, if there's a lot of jaw tension and if these muscles are tight, it's going to restrict ability to open and close. Um, it's also the, the, I think, going theory is that tension 
if for adults who have tongue ties and lip ties, that tension can lead to migraines. And you'll see why more in a minute, because I'm not done. So here are more pieces. So those are the pterygoids, spelled with a P, because that's exciting. All right, so we have those. Um, here's another view from the front of pterygoids. So um, turns out when people get these books, they uh, don't color them, and then you can buy them from thrift stores. So here's another picture of the lateral pterygoid. You can see how it goes from the side to the jaw. And then down here is the medial pterygoids. Um, and you can see here that it helps move the jaw mandible, retracts the mandible, elevates the mandible. So if those are tight, you're going to have problems. All right, here we go. So pictures, awesome. Um, so I talked about the hyoids before. Here's another view of it. And you can also see, again, if there's tension, if there's tension in the tongue, that will put, ooh, this is awkward, sorry. Best I could do. This will put tension here and here. So that's connecting to the bone in the head behind the ear. So um, I'm going someplace with this. So again, sometimes you'll see your chest jaws that are pulled back because this is too tight, I guess, from my reading. Um, but you can also imagine how, again, uh, there'd be issues with chewing, opening the mouth enough, um, and swallowing as well because of all, how all of those pieces connect. Um, so when, you know, there are people who, a lot of times, babies with tongue ties, um, before acknowledging or looking for a tongue tie, it's not uncommon to hear about babies who are sent for a swallow study. Well, again, with those muscles that help, the hyoids, that help with swallowing, if there is a restriction, I have to imagine that under the tongue, I'd have to imagine that if it was restricting um, those muscles that aid in swallowing, then you're going to see swallowing issues. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's it. One of the things I'm just going to take a second. Uh, one of the things that we are learning and that we're starting to see more is that, um, it's not just about going in and releasing the freedom. It's not just about that. Um, the more we understand it, the more that we understand that it is a process of going in both with releasing the ties, but there are times as well where there are enough restrictions in the jaw, neck, you know, and, and the head as well, um, that sometimes just the body work, uh, cranial sacral, but also a good pediatric chiropractor can work on those muscles and the pterygoids on the other side, and releasing those, getting them to relax, um, will actually, will we've seen, uh, especially posterior ties disappear once that's not being pulled on, um, once the muscles are able to move where they're supposed to move. So I, I can't emphasize enough that it's not a matter of just getting the tongue tie clipped and things will be better. Um, definitely you have to do both. You have not, well, not always. Most cases you have to do both. So moms will get their baby's tongue ties and lip ties released, but not go for the follow-up care to release the jaw and, and everything else. And um, if you can find especially really, really great providers, um, they will also work inside the mouth. Um, I know that's one thing Dr. Laura is trained to do. Not all of them are trained to do. Um, but it's, I think, part of the reason that we are able to collaborate so well together on this because she, she understands and is comfortable with all parts of the head 
and um, how it affects not just breastfeeding, but just in general. So I had to take a time out to say that. Um, so I mentioned um, tongue tie and uh, migraines. Um, it can also, tongue ties and the resulting tension can lead to TMJ, which I know my mom has. Um, she has a tongue tie. <laughs> really, really common, guys. Really common. It just is. Um, so it can also cause TMJ. One of the other things that it is linked to is torticollis. So, um, you know, we are seeing it to a certain extent, flat head especially, because, which is not torticollis. But we're seeing flat heads because parents are leaving their babies in car seats too much. So I'm going to put on my car seat technician hat for a second. Car seats are for cars. That's it. Car seats are not a place for your baby to sleep outside of the car. Car seats are not a place to keep your baby while you are in grocery shopping. Car seats are not meant to be put on the top of shopping carts. Kids are spending far too much time in those infant car seats. And now over half of babies are ending up in the United States with a flat head because parents are leaving their babies in there too much. I know other people do it. That's why half of all babies have flat heads. Stop it. Stop doing it. Please carry a baby. You have two hands for a reason. Babies out. You can eat dinner with one hand and then your baby will not be getting a flat head. All right. Taking off my car seat technician hat for a second. Okay. Thanks. Now, so torticollis. Um, Let's see. Sorry. I have a lot of pictures that I, that I colored. Um, so one of the things too, and this was a dis discussion Dr. Laura and I had, there's this muscle here. Um, the sternocleidomastoid, and it's so named because of where it um, attaches. And so if you can imagine that there's a lot of tension being put on this Spot, remember right behind the ear right yeah okay so you can imagine if there's a lot of tension being pulled on this side it's going to cause a restriction and if it's restricted on one side that's when we start to see that torticollis right um so it's a matter of you know there are stretches that can be done physical therapy definitely helps yes molly but if you can see that if there's especially really, really bad tongue ties, especially ones that go all the way to the front and listen, it does not matter if the baby can stick their tongue out beyond the bottom lip. That is patently false. And anyone who tells you that needs to um, start paying attention to education and start paying attention to parents because that's baloney. Okay. So there's that, so that can affect. And then just in general, more broadly speaking, the different parts of the head. Okay, so this is kind of my last one. Again, you can see those different um, muscles that I colored. Um, the, the yellow ones, those are the ones around the lip. I colored those because if we have upper lip ties and lower lip ties that are restricting the movement of these muscles that go around like this, um, if you have that, that's going to also create restrictions, right? Makes sense because they can't move how they need to move. So, you know, you end up with issues. Also, as those muscles do pull, one of the things that I'm learning too, um, and I think Dr. Gahari has said this before on different forums, but if there's those tissues, it pulls out the teeth. Um, similarly, tongue ties will pull in teeth. So um, I had braces, but you can still see that my freedom pulls in the bottom teeth. So it's a lot. Also, so I wanted to point out then for the head, everything kind of fans out behind the ear. 
So again, if you can imagine that this is being, oh, hi. So if you can imagine that this is being pulled on this way, it's going to pull on this muscle that spreads out like a fan. And so you're going to start to see issues with heads, bumpy heads, you know, the where you can see, anytime I can look at a baby and see the bony plates right here or right here, that's when I go, okay, we have issues. We have tongue tie, maybe lip tie, what else is going on? So again, uh, especially in bad cases, getting this released can allow everything to relax, allow this to no longer be pulled on. Um, and here's a couple more pictures and then I'll be done because we're pushing 15 minutes and you're sticking with me, hopefully. <laughs> Are you turned me off a little while ago? So there's this temporoparitalis. That's why I'm not in med school. So you can see how that gets pulled. And then on this side. No, wait. This side. I'm trying to do everything backwards. Do you see how those also could affect the shape of the head? So. All right. That's what I got for now. Um, uh, I'm still learning. We're all still learning. Not a doctor. Not intended to substitute for medical advice. Um, but hopefully this helps share with other people. Um, get, get yourself a musculoskeletal anatomy clinic. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I amuse myself. Um, and then hopefully, you know, if you have questions, concerns, comment below, shout out. Um, and let's hopefully this helps you. Okay. My dog needs to go out. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.